Hi, I'm Chris from Physio7, and today I'm gonna to show you some stretching and release techniques for Achilles tendinopathy. Quick reminder of the anatomy, the Achilles tendon is the big thick tendon at the back of the lower leg, attaching the two calf muscles to the heel bone. We've got the deep soleus muscle, and then on top of that, the superficial, powerful gastrocnemius muscle. In terms of its wider functional unit, the Achilles forms part of the superficial backline if we look at the anatomy trains model. So that superficial backline also encompasses the erector spiny, the hamstrings and into the calf muscle, and then into the plantar fascia of both feet. The Achilles is subject to loads of seven or eight times body weight when we're running, hopping, and bounding. So it's really important that we keep it in good nick. So I'm gonna show you some stretching and release techniques of the Achilles itself, the two calf muscles, and then other parts of that wider functional chain. So first of all, a classic technique, the deep transverse frictions to the Achilles tendon itself. So, First off, you want to find the painful area and you want to work along the tendon with the foot in a roughly a right angle position and have a feel along the tendon to see if you can find that really tender spot. You might want to try with your foot pointing down a little so that you can get right into the front of the tendon because sometimes the painful spots are right in the front deep in here. But once you've found that painful area, certainly if the, the painful area is on the outside or the inside, you want your foot again back at around about a right angle, and you're going to use this pincer grip, and you're going to work across the tendon. And according to James Syriax, who's Dr. Syriax is the godfather of the deep transverse frictions, you want to repeat for 10 to 20 minutes every other day. And over that 10 to 20 minutes, you want to start off with a firm enough pressure that you're working not on the skin, but with the skin. Um, and then you build up the pressure over time, because usually the tendon's going to go a little bit numb as you, as you keep doing this. So the number it goes, the harder you can press, until you're working really, really quite hard into the tendon at the end of the 20 minutes, all things being well. Sometimes when you have an injury, the skin can get matted down to the tendon and to the connective tissues around it. So it's worth checking out that the skin moves freely and that you're not getting any little snag points that are going to affect you when you stretch the tendon or when you load the tendon. So for this we're going to test using a squash ball because it's, um, it's a little bit tacky and can tack onto the skin. I'm going to again test with the foot at around about a right angle because there's a little bit of tension already over the skin and the tendon at that point. And I'm just going to get a squash ball and I'm going to move it along the length of the tendon. Again, we're going to go with the skin, not just on the skin. And we're going to move up and down, in and out, and in all directions. We want to check that the skin moves freely in all these different areas. Now to test, you want to come up the inside of the tendon. You also want to go along the back side and also the outside as well. If we find some little snag points, let's say here it's particularly tight, which on me it is pretty tight. Now I can lay myself a little slack by just pointing the toes down a bit and it gives me a little bit more freedom of skin movement to work with. And I'm just going to work into that. I'm going to put some fairly deep pressure in and I'm going to work up and down, in and out, and a few diagonals as well. And just keep working at it, usually just a few seconds, until the skin feels more pliable and easier to move. If you get any areas that feel really matted down uh, and really sticky, you can do a little manipulation where you're just going to wind the skin up and push hard. You can try in all different directions, wind the skin up, push hard, wind the skin, push hard. Now when we do this sort of technique, we likely to be breaking a few little adhesions that sit between the skin and the tendon. So it can get a little bit, a little bit tender afterwards. Um, so it's worth trying something like an ice pack, bag of peas, wrap it in a damp tea towel, pop it over that area for 10 minutes or so just to calm things down afterwards. 
Now it's fairly obvious that you don't want to be tight in the two muscles that attach into the Achilles tendon. So I'm going to show you two classic calf stretches, one for the gastrocnemius and one for the soleus muscle, and then one variation on that theme. Just a quick word to the wise though, just because you feel tight doesn't mean you are tight. Uh, and if you really have adequate flexibility, there's no point hammering these stretches. So really a runner wants to be able to um, move the, from, from a sort of a right angle, a runner needs to be able to bend the foot upwards about 30 degrees. Um, but a pretty good rule of thumb is test both sides. And if one side is particularly tighter than the other, then you probably need to work on that. Uh, so here we go. So first of all, for the, the gastrocnemius muscle, I'm going to be stretching my left calf. This is for the big gastro. You're going to keep the knee straight, the heel down, and you're going to lunge gently into the stretch. And you want to relax into it. And just some nice belly breathing is a good idea as you do this. You really want to relax your body as best you can and then you should feel a nice deep stretch into the calf muscle, the top of the calf for this one. Most people would probably say that you need to stretch at least 30 seconds if you're going to gain any length in this muscle, and possibly up to 5 minutes, but whatever you do between 30 and seconds and 5 minutes, make sure you feel some kind of release. And then secondly, for the soleus muscle, the lower calf muscle, it's a very similar stretch but with the knee bent and you're going to sink down into it and you should feel the stretch lower down in the calf. But again, relax your body, hold for 30 seconds to 5 minutes. And the last one, just a variation on that soleus stretch, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bias the plantar fascia on the bottom of the foot. So we're going to have the toes up. And this time, toes up on a little rolled up towel and we're going to sink down into that stretch. But if you want to try something a little bit different, you can do it on a step. If I do my right one to show you, I can put my foot up against the step, stretch into this, knee forward, keep the heel down, 30 seconds to five minutes and relax into it. You should feel a nice stretch on the bottom of the foot and probably into the lower calf as well with this one. When I stretch a piece of elastic, we get fairly uniform stretch throughout that piece of elastic. But when there's a knot in the piece of elastic, then the knot doesn't stretch an awful lot, but there's compensatory stretch, extra stretch in other parts of that bit of elastic. The same sort of thing happens when we're stretching muscles. If we have tight knots and bands in the muscle, then there are going to be other parts of the muscle that are going to have overstretch to compensate, and sometimes there's overstretch through other parts of the functional chain as well. So when we have trigger points in a calf muscle, we can use one of these things. It's a little spiky massage ball. This is a pretty firm one, there's not a lot of give in that. So let's get into position. Okay. So first of all, we're gonna find those trigger points. And we're gonna roll through the muscle, from the very top of the muscle behind the knee, into the middle of the muscle and into the lower muscle. We can work the inside, the outside, and roll through, see if we can find those tight, tender trigger points. Once we find one, you just want to relax and let the weight of the lower leg just sink down into the muscle. And really you want that feeling like the ball's melting into the muscle. Sometimes with a really good trigger point, you're going to get a muscle twitch as the trigger point releases usually takes about a minute to nicely release a trigger point, or at least to provoke some, some relaxation in the muscle. Um, and you can spend five or six minutes just working through various trigger points in your calf muscles. So if you're tight and sore in the plantar fascia on the bottom of your foot, this is a really simple self-help release technique for you. Um, so first of all, find the sore matted down area and work through the plantar fascia usually from your you, you're going to feel it around your heel and maybe into the arch but work through the extent of the plantar fascia and find those sore matted areas once you've found them here we go deep pressure from your thumb reinforce using the other thumb 
and then just move your toes up and down. And you're gonna repeat that for one to two minutes. Basically, you're, you're, you're holding down the skin and you're gliding the plantar fascia underneath your thumbs. And you can then move on through the plantar fascia and repeat in any of the sore, tight, matted down areas. Now, when you did your Solea stretch and you tried to get your knee over the front of your foot, if you had a nipping in the front of the ankle, it might just be that you're very tight in the lower calf and the Achilles and you need to release and work on that. Or it might be that your ankle joint isn't gliding properly. And in that case, we can use this simple treatment technique. You're gonna get a loop of thick therapy band and you're gonna place it around the affected ankle. And just around that lower leg, and we're gonna pull back quite hard. So what we're getting here is a gliding forward of the tibia and the fibula. And we can start with just some little bouncy movements. Now it should be said that this should feel easier with the band than it is without. And if it's no easier, then forget it, don't use it, and we'll try something different. But if it's easier, you can bounce 10 to 20 times, and then you can hold your stretch with the band still in place. And again, sink into it, relax, hold it for 30 seconds to five minutes. So I've tried to show you some useful hints and techniques to self-treat your Achilles tendinopathy, but of course there's no substitute for going to see a professional. So if you're unsure of your true diagnosis or you're not liking the results you're getting, book in to see a chartered physiotherapist who can help to coordinate your treatment plan. Good luck guys.